Corals have existed more or less in their current state for 26 million years. Well, in the last 26 million years, a lot of stuff has happened to the globe. We've had massive changes in sea level, we've had massive changes in temperature, some pretty big fluctuations in the acidity of the oceans, yet they've made it through all those fluctuations, and it's because they have this unique biology that allows them to tolerate stress. I'm a marine ecologist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And I was like, well, I'm gonna be an intertidal ecologist. That way, when I'm done working, all I have to do is put on my wetsuit and I have 10 feet to walk to get into the surf. The disparity between what we know about the way corals die and the way corals grow is the thing that motivates me. If we want to study what corals can do, we can't just think about the places that they died and the ways that they died and the things that killed them. We need to think about the ways they live, the places they've recovered, and the things that maximize their capacity for growth. I know we can watch corals grow in macro scale, but actually how does that little thing grow through time? What does that look like? Hey, Jules. Hey, guys. Jules Jaffe is in his lab. They're technologists. So we have a question, and they can build a tool specifically designed to answer our question. The primary focus of my lab is to invent new instruments to observe natural phenomena in the ocean. The things that we're most interested in, in my group are the little teeny things. These tiny parts of the coral are really, really important in understanding how a coral survives, works, makes a living. Hi Ben, here's the microscope. The stereo microscope is mainly a lab instrument that allows us to understand these things in 3D. One of the interesting things that we learned with the stereo microscope was about coral bleaching. I think if you ask anybody what some of the biggest threats are to coral reefs, they're gonna tell you warm water events and subsequent bleaching. It only takes a couple degree temperature change for a couple weeks to cause a coral to bleach. Coral is a farmer, it's an animal that cultivates algae or zooxanthellae, and those live inside the coral. As we watched the corals bleach, we saw something that we found to be very interesting, and that was the little algae that live inside the coral started to stick to each other or aggregate before they got expelled through the coral polyps. We've never seen that before. And we're actually gonna be able to look at the photo system of those little algae while they're in the coral and try to figure out what's going on when they're being bleached. The growth experiments that we've been doing were motivated by the coral reef ecologists. Corals are really simple organisms. And they're like sea anemones, except they make a little house for themselves out of calcium and carbon that they pull out of the water. They combine it, they make this thing called calcium carbonate, which is like their bone. Time-lapse is such an excellent tool for a coral researcher because corals grow at a very different pace. Like, coral is talking to us. It's just talking at a pace that we can't understand. So to speed that pace up, we can figure out what they're telling us. We found some little coral branches, we put them up to the glass, and we got the camera going, taking a picture once every 60 seconds. After three weeks, we had this time-lapse video one of the really cool things we may have seen is the coral was growing forward like this, the leading edge was growing, but then it threw out a little branch tip off to the side. And this thing started going forward, but the, the, the main coral axis stopped growing as fast. Nobody's really seen calcification occurring at the pollen scale. The nice thing about the time-lapse experiments that we're doing with the stereo microscope is that we can observe the daily rate of growth. It, does it start, does it stop? What happens when it comes up against another coral or some algae or any physical barrier, what happens? Let's start injuring corals and let's turn up the temperature and see how that changes the growth rate. Let's acidify the water, see what happens. 
How does that change the growth? Does it redirect? These are the fundamental questions underlying our understanding of, of coral growth and health and resilience. The ability of the stereo microscope to further understanding of coral biology is nearly limitless. We have the world's attention with this global mass bleaching event. Now it's a question of what do we do with it? I think no matter what we do, there'll be corals in 26 million years, but it's our choice what they're gonna look like for the next million.